and we're live. Hello, star people. Awesome news. The meteor drought has come to an end. So this drought happens every year between the quadranted meteor shower in early January and the lyrid meteor shower at the end of April. So in other words, there are no major meteor showers in the early months of every year. But here in April, the showers start again. Yay. And after this, starting now, we'll have a major meteor shower nearly every month through the end of 2025. And I'm going to tell you the best time to watch for Lyrid meteors this month in 2025. Um, it's a little tricky this year. And here is your first clue as to why. So a fat crescent moon like this one in this photo by Earth Sky Community member Joe Kingor will be rising into your sky in the hours after midnight on the peak morning of 2025's Lyrid meteor shower. And that'll be true no matter where you live on the globe. So what does that mean? It means you've got to avoid the moon, uh, and, but we'll talk more about that later. Do you really have to avoid it? Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but in order to see the most Lyrid meteors, you'll want to avoid the moon. Uh, and this, the Lyrid meteor showers are debris left behind in the orbit of a comet, in this case, Comet Thatcher. And we're in the comet's debris stream now, and we will be until around this month's end. So it's that debris striking our atmosphere and vaporizing that causes the streaks of light that we see as as meteors. So you might catch a Lyrid any time now, but unlike some meteor showers, the peak of the Lyrids is narrow. So there's no weeks long meteor watching bonanza as with say the Perseid meteor shower in August, you've got to catch that peak night. So when is that? The predicted peak of the Lyrids in 2025 is 16 UTC on April 22nd. So you might see that date around April 22nd. Uh, and that would be perfect for us in the Americas on that morning, the morning of April 22nd. But remember, the moon will be in the way. And that's why you'll want to watch for Lyrid meteors from late evening on April 21st until the moon rises in the hours after midnight on April 22nd. So here's our advice. Plan ahead. Uh, figure out where you're going to go, and you'll definitely want a dark sky. And I'm being distracted here by the comments on the screen. That's so cool. Hey, Matthew, hi. Yes, asteroid. Donald Johansson on Sunday. The Lucy spacecraft is going there. Uh, okay, here's our advice. You'll want a dark sky. So we invite you to mention uh, Earth Sky's Best Places to Stargaze page, and the link is here on the page. Uh, it's a crowdsourced page that we've been building over several years, and it has lots of great suggestions about places to go watch meteors. So every one of those red dots represents a place that one of you recommended as a great place to stargaze. And of course, you can expand that map and you can see the whole world on this map. And you can definitely find a great place to watch meteors near you. So late at night, April 21st, until moonrise on April 22nd. And so what about after the moon rises? You can see uh, the brightest meteors in the Lyrid shower in moonlight, as illustrated by this photo by our friend Elliot Herman in Tucson, Arizona. And Elliot is a veteran meteor photographer, and he's in Arizona, so he has a dark sky. And he's caught lots of images of meteors flying in the bright light of the moon. But maybe you're not a meteor veteran, so what can you do after moonrise on April 22nd to optimize your chance to see a few more meteors? Uh, I have a special guest here with us today, 
John Goss, who is uh, going to tell us about how to watch this Lyrid meteor shower, even in the light of the moon. Hi, John. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Hi. Well, it's great to be here to talk about the uh, Lyrid's meteors. And I also want to add that it is great uh, to, to help you out with your your big chance of not only seeing meteors, but with uh, your chance to enjoy nature at night. Think about nature at night, which is the smell of the night air, the hoot of the owls, maybe even see some fireflies or two. But uh, this all adds to the meteor observing experience. So you, you want to know when and where to look in the sky. Well, to see uh, the Lyrid meteors, you have to go out. It's uh, after 11 p.m. on the 21st. Now look to the northeast and you'll see a bright star rising. That's, that's Lyra, I mean Vega, in the constellation Lyra. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's true to be pretty easy to see. Um, and then you really don't want to spend too much time looking in that direction. You have much better experience at observing meteors by turning either to your left or to your right. Uh, because if you look at, 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 at Lyra or Vega, you will see meteors coming straight at you, and they aren't uh, that much, they aren't really cool to look at. You want to see long streaks. So if you turn to your right or your left, you'll see uh, meteors as they fly by through, through the atmosphere. Uh, so you will, as you're reclining, enjoying this, you will see three to 10, um, uh, excuse me, a meteor every three to 10 minutes or so. And um, these things are moving pretty darn fast. Uh, keep in mind that uh, these things are moving like 30,000 miles per hour. So it just takes a few a second or so, maybe two seconds, to see a meteor fly by. But which, hopefully what you're going to see are uh, something that, that the uh, Lyras are known for. They're known to have a lot of fireballs. And what do I mean by this? It's just a meteor that is not just bright, but is really bright. And it's brighter than the uh, planet Venus, which will be rising early in the morning. So you can kind of compare the brightness of the two. Brighter than the planet Venus. Um, but I think one of the neatest things to look at is something called Earth grazers, which are meteors coming in at a very shallow angle to the Earth's atmosphere, and they scoot through the atmosphere in a long extended streak, which may take a few seconds for them to cross your field of view. Those are really cool to look at. When you see a fireball, or, or let's say a bright meter, many times it's going to leave a what we call a train, which is just a, a slightly glowing trail be, behind it. Though that's really cool to look at because that is the uh, upper atmospheric um, upper atmosphere being ionized uh, by this meteor as it crashes in, in, in into the atmosphere and burns up. Um, the sizes of these things, you know, a, a small meteor is probably about the size of, uh, caused by something uh, the size of a grain of sand. But a large one, like a fireball, something like this, a pebble, <laughs> not very big, but something this size traveling at 30,000 miles per hour, that's moving um, about 10 miles in one second, uh, hits our atmosphere and will light it up. And that's what causes the meteor. That is a really, that's really something to see. And I hope to see some of these on the night of the 21st, probably in the, in more likely into the 22nd before the uh, crescent moon starts to rise. Um, Debbie, back to you. So John, <clears throat> while you were talking, we had a question from Anne early and she wanted to know what's propelling the meteors? Gravity, the earth's gravity is pulling it in. It, you know, the meteors have been going through space at um, orbiting the sun at a very high velocity. As they approach the Earth, they are moving at this high velocity and the Earth's gravity captures it and pulls it even faster into our own atmosphere, causing it to heat up from friction, atmospheric friction, and what we call burn up. It doesn't really burn, but it disintegrates and becomes dust in our upper atmosphere. Okay. And so how many meteors do you think that people will can expect to see? You know, this is a real hit or miss thing because um, some, uh, as you were mentioning, uh, we, we are seeing, this is seeing debris from Comet Thatcher and it's not released at a constant rate. So some parts of this meteor stream that's coming across is pretty dense. And you might see, uh, you might see only three, four, five, six, seven per hour. Um, 
or you may end up seeing 20, or you may end up seeing 30, 40, 50, and so on. It averages out to about 20 per hour. Remember that 20 per hour includes the meteors behind you that you don't see. No, that's, that's the way it goes. But if you're with some of your buddies and they're looking in the opposite direction, you'll be hearing them going ooh and ah, and you'll feel really missed out. <laughs> but you'll see some that they won't see as well. John, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. Okay, so let me see. Here we go. Uh, okay, so so you know, you, there's you can probably see about twenty an hour. You'll see more before the moon rises, but you might see some after the moon rises too. And um, you know, every meteor shower is really different. Like even the Lyrid meteor shower from year to year is really different. And so one thing that meteor watchers often say is that meteor watching is a lot like fishing and that is you go and sometimes you catch something okay i want to say one more thing about this radiant point of the shower and that is that the constellation lyra the harp for which the Lyrid meteors are named, is a very easy to find constellation. And as John said, uh, you don't have to find it to be able to watch the meteor shower, but if you want to find it, it's pretty easy. It's little and it has a very distinctive shape. It's like a parallelogram with a triangle on top. And that bright star Vega is within that little triangle at the top of the constellation. So this constellation is in the northeast, uh, northeast by late evening, and you probably can find it uh, if you look, but just remember that you don't need to be staring at it to watch the meteor shower because the meteors will appear in all parts of the sky. And I just want to show you one more thing. And that is this cool illustration by our friend Bob King. So this shows you the parent comet of the Lyrid meteor shower, Comet Thatcher. And this comet has a long orbit around the sun. So see that bright dot at the bottom center in this image? Uh, that's the sun. And maybe you can see the orbit of the earth and the other inner planets orbiting around that little sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. And then you can see those longer blue and gold lines that are kind of bisecting the image. Those are the orbits of the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. And then check out the comet's orbit, which is in white. Comet Thatcher, the parent comet of the Lyrids, orbits the sun roughly every 415 years. Uh, it takes a lot longer to complete one orbit than Earth or any of the other major planets. And we haven't seen this comet since the year 1861, but we do see the debris left behind in its orbit as the Lyrid meteor shower. So, that's the Lyrids going on between now and the end of April with the best time to watch late at night, April 21st until moonrise or even after moonrise on April 22nd. I am wishing you clear skies. And if you enjoy this sort of programming, please subscribe, like, and share. One Earth, One Sky, Earth Sky.